Good morning. I'm Paul Beckwith, or at least it's morning for me, and my uh, coffee, very strong coffee, hasn't kicked in yet. Usually I do videos at night. I'm more of a night person, but um, anyway, if I mumble and I seem more incoherent than normal, then it's this is the reason. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about hydrogen sulfide. Frequently over the years, there's hydrogen sulfide eruptions along the coast of Namibia. So what happens is the, you know, I think um, if you followed um, previous videos, you would probably realize I've also, I've talked about the generation of methane, you know, basically you need, it's the, you know, you have microbes breaking down organic matter. And in the presence of oxygen, you get um, the carbon combined with the oxygen, you get CO2 released you know, say in the permafrost or something as it thaws. But if there's a lot of water on the ground, if it's more of a marsh-like situation, there's not a lot of oxygen that the microbes can have access to. So the breakdown of organic matter, the microbial decomposition, produces um, CH4, methane, because there's no oxygen available. You also get, under many conditions, hydrogen sulfide, H2S formed, so if you're ever near the ocean or, you know, elsewhere and you, you smell this rotten egg smell, this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen sulfide, you know, at, at low concentrations. And at higher concentrations, not too much higher, the stuff is deadly. So one of the things that you may have heard of is the so-called Canfield Ocean, which is believed to be one of the mechanisms for a previous uh, mass extinction. So what happens is the oceans get warm, too warm. They get layered and stratified, so the oxygen doesn't get down below. So you have an anoxic or dead zone environment down below. And when you carry this to an extreme, you can get this hydrogen sulfide produced, then bubbles up to the surface. So generally, the stuff is down below in the anoxic environment. But you can get shoaling where, where deep water comes up and it combines with oxygen. And that is one of the mechanisms that is believed to be responsible for previous mass extinction. So I'm going to talk about areas of the ocean right now. And I, and I may tend to have a lot of ocean talks in the next few months because I'm teaching oceanography at the University of Ottawa. It starts um, in early May. It's a compressed course, two three-hour lectures a week. So I'll be, the ocean will be on my mind quite a bit in the next few months. Um, and, uh, you know, it's well worth talking about. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, so this is, you could just Google this uh, title and you could easily find this article. So hydrogen sulfide eruptions along the coast of Namibia. So there's Namibia, there's the African continent. So in the southwest. Um, down here in this region, people living along this desert coast have long been familiar with the rotten egg smell that periodically emanates from the Atlantic Ocean. Now, fishing, their economy is based on fishing, so often when they get this um, smell, um, when they get this type of situation where there's lots of emissions of H2S from the ocean, it kills millions of fish. You know, and then the smell, the smell of the H2S and the fish die off are basically caused by hydrogen sulfide erupting from decaying plants on the seafloor. So anoxic environment, no oxygen, my, microbes, um, microbial decomposition of the plants produces the methane and the hydrogen sulfide. And if, the, if you get shoaling, in other words, this mass of water containing hydrogen sulfide moves up into shallow waters because of the ocean currents or wind patterns, etc., then you get a big release of hydrogen sulfide. So, so this is a, a, a 2004, May 12, 2004, uh, the, the, an eruption in progress. So what you can see is these areas here are where the hydrogen sulfide is being um, released. So it happens periodically in this region because of the ocean currents, etc. The strong ocean currents in the southeast Atlantic Ocean, so off the African southwest coast, 
Strong ocean currents carry nutrient-rich deep ocean water to the surface. The, the nutrients um, cause a proliferation of phytoplankton. When the plants die, they sink to the ocean floor. Bacteria breaks them down. The oxygen is quickly used up in the decay processes. Anaerobic, absence of oxygen, that, that's all anaerobic means. The bacteria take over. These bacteria emit hydrogen sulfide gas as a byproduct, also methane. This gas can build up on the ocean floor. When the conditions change, if there's upwelling and shoaling, then this, this um, stuff can move up to the surface. The hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water, allowing solid white sulfur to precipitate into the ocean, okay, and hydrogen sulfide to be released. So these reactions allow the hydrogen sulfide eruptions to be visible in the satellite images. The white sulfur reflects light, tinting the water bright green along the Namibian Namib 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 coast. Okay, so you can see this milky green outline here. From so this is we're talking lots of sulf hydrogen sulfide. So this is a periodic effect. So let's talk about hydrogen sulfide for a bit. Hydrogen sulfide H two S. Okay, um, two hydrogen atoms, one sulfur, one sulfur. It's a colorless gas with a distinct rotten egg odor. Slightly denser than air, it can be incredibly explosive. When burning with hydrogen, it burns blue to form sulfur dioxide and water. It's somewhat soluble in water and it acts as a weak acid. Okay, so this is the chemical structure of it. These are some of the other names. Okay, sewer gas. Okay, um, and it's got a whole bunch of different names here. Okay, like many other, where is it found? It's produced by decaying organic matter such as plants and animals. It's also released by human and animal waste, released by sewage and manure. Another source is the natural, the, the hot springs. So think Yosemite, hot springs, the sulfur smell, um, okay, as a, as a gas coming out of these. Um, another rotten egg smell is um, from uh, so-called sour gas, okay, or um, methane, well, natural gas is 90% methane, and there's something called mercaptan, which is put in, which gives the natural gas also a, you know, very powerful, you know, rotten egg-like smell. So that's a slightly different um, molecule, and I've often got that wrong in previous videos, but I do learn, so it's, um, I got it correct here, I hope. Hydrogen sulfide is an incredibly dangerous volatile organic compound, or VOC. Very corrosive, uh, it can destroy metals, including stainless steel, which is usually impervious to other things. Okay, um, so at high enough concentrations, such as 500, 700 ppm, exposure can lead to near instant death. Okay, so let's look a bit into that a bit more. Okay, so here's the effects of hydrogen sulfide exposure. So this is in parts per million along the bottom here. So less than one, you know, you can detect, get this distinctive rotten egg odor. Less than one part per million, very low concentrations. 20 to 100 parts per million, you get severe irritation of your eyes and breathing passages. 100 to 250, severe irritation of the eyes and breathing, cough, headache, nausea, loss of sense of smell. 250 to 500 parts per million, difficulty breathing, fluid in lungs, vomiting, dizziness, loss of coordination, all these other nasty things. Uh, slightly higher stumbling, staggering, collapse, or knockdown, loss of coordination. Uh, around, you know, so in this range, 500 to 750, greater than 750, death within moments to minutes due to respiratory paralysis. So this is a very nasty gas. And, you know, in enclosed spaces, you know, people working in enclosed spaces, um, then they have to be very aware of, of these sort of things. Um, there's, uh, these, you know, if you're working in, 
in uh, an area and uh, because you know in closed spaces the concentrations of the gas can get extremely high if there's some source there's all kinds of commercial detectors for hydrogen sulfide etc okay so this is um, what I did is I googled hydrogen sulfide I was in Google images and you get all kinds of information on it I highly recommend you do the same and there's an image here of sources from nature and the ocean where it's coming from so i clicked on this link and here we go here okay so this diagram so basically uh, it talks about uh, hydrothermal vents where hydrogen sulfide can come up it talks about uh, continental shelves where you get bacterial bacterial sulfur reduction you get hydrogen sulfide produced up cold seeps Hydrogen sulfide rich water seeps through the sediments, can collect on the bottom, and if it shoals, then it can release huge amounts of hydrogen sulfide to um, coastlines, etc. This is showing uh, hot springs and stuff, how the stuff also appears. Okay, so there's lots of information on this site, so I highly recommend that you have a look at it. Um, as far as the ocean is concerned, um, it's toxic to most aquatic animals at micromolar concentrations. Um, it's naturally produced in many aquatic environments, coastal wetlands, mangrove forests, hydrothermal vents, freshwater springs. Okay. Um, and there's different articles here. So this is a very detailed article here about hydrogen sulfide being produced periodically on the Namibian shelf. Okay, so one of the very interesting things is these hydrothermal vents. So one of the theories of the origin of life on Earth is that life first started in the deep oceans, bottom of the seafloor, around these hydrothermal vents. So there's obviously no light, there's no photosynthesis, so there's something called chemosynthesis, which allows the... Um, so from photosynthesis, of course, you have light and carbon dioxide. You have the plants that are taking the carbon dioxide, breaking it down. The carbon goes into building the plants, and it also provides, of course, the energy is key. It, the energy is provided for all of these processes. So now with no light and no photosynthesis, there's a process called chemosynthesis that is based on the breakdown of the Sulfur, of, of sulfur and nitrogen compound and it can can produce the carbon and the energy for for um, organisms to live and in fact to thrive on these um, hydrothermal vents so this is a good image here it looks complicated don't worry just look at the detail not the details but just the general picture you know you have magma you can have upwelling of hot magma and the seawater can diffuse down be warmed up and come back out remember the hot water will rise up okay so it brings all these chemicals and can produce these terraces called black smokers or precipitation chimneys so you get the hot water coming up here it can be three or four hundred degrees right in the center here and then the water around will be slightly cooler and you can get a proliferation of life living around these zones these these uh black smokers, you can have white smokers, um, hydrothermal vents. And these are very, very, these are quite widespread along mid-ocean ridges and stuff where continental plates um, are, uh, are, are uh, intersecting each other. So there's an image, I think there's some images here showing. So these are the different continental plates and these are regions, the red regions are regions where we found these hydrothermal vents. So so, and hydrogen sulfide is, you know, in high concentrations around these um, hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, and many organisms, uh, you know, that are not based on so photosynthesis, they're based on chemosynthesis, chemosynthesis are located um, in these regions. Okay, so what about at the ocean surface now? And I see I'm probably rambling a bit so I'm going to have to go over and into a second video and this is a very important topic so I will do that thanks for listening